hello everyone good day to you good evening to you good morning to you wherever you are watching from and whatever time you are watching from i salute you you are all welcome to today's training brought to you by fciba edutech so we'll be considering another exciting training today uh on 21st century skills in education so let's get it started but before we before we get started let's know what we do in fc by edutech now fc by edutech is a dedicated technology company focused on promoting educational institution through branding marketing and technology our goal is to increase student enrollment engagement better learning brand awareness for our clients we achieve this by developing professional and irresistible brand awareness digital marketing and technology integration into learning now before we go into the topic uh i would like you to drop your your name your school where you are watching from please do that in the comment section now please do that in the comment section your name your school your position where you are watching from and as you are watching this video please do well to share with your fellow educators please try to share please try to share share the broadcast share the broadcast share on whatsapp share on facebook share everywhere so that every other person that are into education can learn this, this training is for both teachers and school leaders not just for school leaders for everybody into education in fact if students are available they can key into it and learn because 21st century skills is for everybody it's not just for a particular set of people but mainly it's for educators please share the video share the video please share the video god bless you as you are sharing the video now i'm going to be considering a lot of things but these are the main points reviewing the components of 20th century learning so i'm going to be talking about the 20th century um what we are doing what uh, the method of teaching in the 20th century in the 19th how they were teaching in the 19th now and and secondly we're going to develop an understanding of the 21st century learning skills we're going to develop an understanding of 21st century learning skills all the skills that you need to learn and know in the 21st century uh you're going to learn that also so from there we're going to recognize assessment as a key component of instruction in 21st century so these are just the uh, basic things they are going to learn uh but there are many but under this each of these topics uh we have a lot of bulky uh content inside so without further ado let's get it started now before we start can you just think how our world has changed a lot of things have changed really 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 in the last 10 years many people don't know what they call AI. we don't know what they call chat gpt in the previous now in the uh, last 20 years there's nothing like facebook because facebook is just 20 years in 2024 before before the last 20 years there was nothing like facebook there was no twitter there was no whatsapp a lot of things have changed in the last 30 years you may not be thinking about mobile phone at all mobile phone in fact internet was not popular in the last 30 years so you think that things are changing so if things are changing in the in the uh uh in the in the secular world so it must also change in education now let's 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 use this chart let's see this chart now these are activities communication career your school years your life today now uh those of us that are aged maybe middle age you can you can you can remember that when you were in school uh your mode of communication was just writing you can only use post office to write if you want to write a letter to your friend or your father or your anybody you use post office to write you write your letter and it can take weeks or months to get delivered but today there is whatsapp there is sms uh, the, in your career today you can work remotely you can do a lot of things remotely but before you have to be present there's no work you can do remotely you have to be present wherever you are working so I want to drop in the comment section what you were doing in your school years when you were in school and versus what life is all about today. Please drop that in the comment section. I'll be waiting for your comments. What you were doing before and uh, when you were in school and how life has turned out today so that you can see the difference. You can see the difference. So let's consider some some things. So these are 
the CD player, holding the CD player, I see what they are using now. This, these are the old telephone, an early telephone design. And you can see the new design now. You can see this printer, this old rugged printer. See the printer we have today. In fact, today we now have pocket printer now that you can even you can carry anywhere. Before you use trade by butter, but now you can use your credit card to buy things online. You can use your money to buy things online. Before it was trade by butter. Before it was typewriter, but now you have you have laptop. Now the the issue with the current uh, educator is that they think that oh lenders are the same as they always been. The same method has worked for me when I was a student. Work for my student now. No, especially with this Gen Z generation, you cannot compare the way you are being taught, the way you were taught some years ago when you were in school. You cannot compare. You cannot be. You cannot use the same method to be teaching your student now. You must adapt to the current generation. This is the twenty first century. Today's learners are totally different. They think and process information fundamentally differently from their predecessors. The way these current generations think, the way they think and process information is totally, totally different. They have uh, access to internet, they have access to uh, YouTube, they to watch videos, they have access to a lot of tools, a lot of things that you don't have access to. So the way you are going to teach them, you must be totally different. Let's examine the framework for 28th century learning. In the 28th century learning, there are two major things, there are two major framework, which is the core subject, English, Mathematics, Science, Business Studies, and every other subject you can think of, then assessment. So assessment means the test, the exam, or whatever they want to go to them. So if your school, if this is the only thing you do in your school, you teach the subject, then you do assessment, you teach the subject, and you do assessment, that means that your school is still in the 28th century, not 21st century. And then your teaching methodology is outdated. So then that is the reason why you are in this uh, training today to know what you can do the, to get the fresh framework for your school to use the 21st century framework. 21st century framework. So let's move to the second the next slide. Now we are going to check the um the 21st century framework. The first thing to be taught is life skills in 21st century. Life skills. 21st century content then the core subject you can see that the, the core subject has uh, the bigger uh, space because English mathematics uh, French or whatever subject you are teaching them is very necessary so we give it the larger percentage then learning and thinking skills ICT literacy then the way to assess the 21st century is different from the way you assess uh, the, the 20th century if your school has not adapt this model this framework then your school is currently archaic before we continue to explore all these life skills 24th century content and everything i hope please click on the share button click on the share button and share this video share this training now please click on the share button and share this training and don't forget to subscribe to this youtube channel and all on our social media platform please try as much as possible to follow us on facebook on twitter on instagram at fc by Dutech. thank you so let's continue now we will consider issues related to student achievement are derived from four areas what is the curriculum what we teach the curriculum what do you what are you teach what is your curriculum the quality of instruction how do you teach effectiveness of the school like the school premises that you use your school your classroom how does it look like now the characteristic of the student what is the characteristic of the student that is who we teach these are the four uh four areas four related areas to student achievement so if you can get these four things right then you are going to take your school to the next level look around things are different now what condition do we control that can be altered to improve student achievement? So you need to look at what are the things that you need to do different. The way you have been doing things. For example, what we did last session, you need to sit down and review. What can we do different? What can we alter? What can we change to improve student achievement? 
and that means you have to come back here to see this that is curriculum what you teach what are you teaching what curriculum are you using is it outdated is it current the quality of instruction how do you present your teaching so these are the things you need to uh, look differently and change and we first said if you think you can or you think you can't you are right that is if you think okay you cannot achieve it ah with all this thing that they are saying 21st century 21st century let me just be doing my thing the way i'll be doing it oh you are right but if you think ah we, we, need, we need to do it right we need to change then you're also right whatever you think you can or you can't you are right so it, the ball is in your court 21st century challenges you to institute 21st century skills for education in your state district and schools which can make the difference for students why are we talking about 21st century skills why why could you, why, why does it continue with the 20th century and focus on that why do you have to focus on changing things and that now we need to consider the top skills hmm, for 21st century skills that is now the current work space the current the current uh uh what do you call it work working environment the companies and every other thing these are the things that they need apart from you going to the university or learning a trade or learning something or be a degree holder or master's degree holder whatever you are doing in in the current workforce you have to know you have to have the 21st century skills which include critical thinking communication skills innovation skills productivity and accountability you must be able to assess analyze and synthesize information you must have leadership skill collaboration adaptability entrepreneurship and global citizenship so these are the skills we are trying to teach the students in the 21st century not just mathematics and english not just science and biology not just uh, arts, uh, uh, arts no in 21st century all these skills must be taught all these skills must be taught so let's move on to the next slide now in, in the 21st century a student must not just know mathematics and english like i said earlier critical thinking and problem solving curiosity and imagination all these are supposed to be learned now in the 21st century uh we focus the the three arrows that is reading writing and arithmetic with the four c's now you know in the 20th century what uh, our teachers focus on is how to read write and do arithmetic isn't it but now we want to complement that with the four c's now the four c's are critical thinking and problem solving communication collaboration and creativity so in 21st century we are trying to 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 get these two tools to what what to match the old and the new together so we are not doing away with the with the old method but we are trying to improve the, the new the old method and still add something new to it which is critical thinking and problem solving communication collaboration and creativity skills now why do you apply this framework because it it partner it's a partnership for 21st century skills and it engage 21st century skills in the sense that in the work like i said earlier the workforce now requires that you must have all these skills so the reason why we need to implement this framework is because to prepare our students for the for, for the future to prepare them for the current the current uh uh the current workforce now let's look at this uh image as a 21st century teacher or 21st century student you must be able to get this system ready for yourself now let's look at this life and career skills learning and innovation skills the four C's information media and technology skills then the core subject now you can see the core subject always have the great, greatest margin because we, that is the bedrock of all knowledge that is the bedrock of all knowledge now if a student comes to your school maybe is in jss1 before the student will leave your school 
at SS3, the student must be able to have acquired all these skills. That is life and career skills, not just 2 plus 2 or 4 plus 4. Learning and innovation skills, which has to do with critical thinking, communication skills, collaboration, creativity. And the third one is information, media and technology skills, that is computer skills, coding, uh, robotic and several other ones, which we are still going to discuss as we go on. Now, through that, you do your standard and assessment, curriculum and instruction, professional development, and your learning environment. All this must be put in place while you are focusing on the 21st century skills implementation. The 21st century skill are a set of ability that students need to develop in order to succeed in, the, in this information age. Yeah, you are in the information age already. Now, the learning skills, which I'll be talking about, the four Cs, the critical thinking, the creative thinking, communication, and collaborating. Those are the skills under the learning skills. Now, we now come to literacy skills, information literacy, hmm? media literacy, ICT literacy. These are the skills that you must implement in your school. Now we now go to the life and career skills. Flexible, have the can be flexible, flexibility and adaptability, initiative and step direction, social and cross cultural production, productivity and accountability, leadership and responsibility. You know, all this now be, be able to prepare the student by the time they finish from your school, they are not just good in mathematics, they're not just good in English, but they are ready for life for this information age they are ready to face anything they are ready to face anything now let's talk about critical thinking uh, what is the critical thinking all about which is the first thing we're going to learn from these learning skills if you are still following please uh, drop a message there that i'm still following if you are still following me if you are still following me, drop a just drop a uh, a comment on the comment section that I'm still following, so that we know that people are still following. Now, our students, they are inquirers. That is, they frame, analyze, and synthesize information, as well as negotiate meaning across language and culture, in order to explore problems and issue them from their own and different perspective. What is telling us is that majority of the people, we are students we have now, or the, the students we have now they are very inquisitive they can ask you question they can they will ask you why is this like this why is this like this why is this like this and you must be able to develop these skills in them that is critical thinking if uh if something happen you must give them uh, if something if there's an issue they must be able to think critically now if this is this this must be this they must be able to come out come up with a, a solution now critical thinking has to do with analyzing arguing classifying comparing and contrasting defining describing evaluating explaining problem solving tracking cause and effect so critical thinking is a very powerful skill that need to be developed as part of the learning skills now let's let's come to creative thinking students are creator and innovator so they have this these skills in them which we need to, you know, to develop. Respond to new and diverse perspectives as they use language in imaginative and original ways to make useful contribution. You, you, may, if you don't develop this, you know, you will until you develop these skills in your students. That's when you will know that wow. So this student can do this. They can make the design. They can, they can, they can do this. They can come up with this idea. They can, they can design things, entertaining others, imagining ideas, improvising, innovating, overturning something, problem solving, questioning. So these are the skills. These are part of the learning skills. Create the, a, part, a part of the learning skills under the uh, under the learning skills in uh, uh, creative thinking as part of the learning skills. Sorry. So you need to develop these skills in your students. But we wonder how do we develop these skills? We are going to get there. Now let's go to the next one: communicating, which is the communication skill, part of the forces. Now what is communication? Ability to 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 express your mind, to tell your to, to whatever you are having in your mind to to say it. Analyzing the situation, choosing a medium, evalu evaluating messages, eh? following conventions, listening actively, reading, speaking, taking means effectively, switching from receiving ideas to providing ideas back and forth, 
this is technology writing all these are, 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 are communication skills which need to be developed students are effective communicators that is they use language to engage in meaningful conversation to understand and interpret spoken language and written text and to present information concept and idea that is you must be able to develop the skills in your students so that they can uh, uh express themselves they can be bold anywhere they can speak anywhere so these are the skills that you need to develop so the next one we are going to is collaborating this is collaboration skills students are collaborators they love to work together and one of the ways to achieve this skill is giving them group projects which they can even use their some their their their, their uh, experience maybe from what they have learned from home they can bring together to solve the particular problem so they share the resources together they brainstorm ideas together they delegate they do the decision making together they do their goal setting together so this collaboration skill can be developed by giving a peer group work to your students and these skills will help them to know how to work together uh, with their team member when they graduate from school and start working so this skill needs to be developed now let's look at let's observe the four C's again now critical thinking looking at problems in a new way linking learning across subjects and discipline now if you are able to develop critical thinking in your students it will help them to uh it will help them in all the subjects and discipline that they are offering because they will be able to <coughs> excuse me they will, they will be able to uh critical thinking is all about looking at problems in a new way logically eh? not just taking right decision you have to think and think and think before you 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 you, you come up with your uh with, with your solution now creativity is trying new approaches to get things done which is equals to innovation and invention so these are the skills that need to be developed in our students so that they will not just become uh a scholar without without uh without brain somebody can be brilliant and know a lot of things but without all these skills they cannot go far in life now communication skills very important sharing thoughts question ideas and solutions is very very important it's very very important in the 21st century and lastly what we have talking about is collaboration working together to reach a goal putting talent experience and expertise together now what does critical thinking really mean without critical thinking you make rash conclusions but with critical thinking you have intellectual discipline with that critical thinking you are going to be take everything as meat that is mystification but with critical thinking you clear expression you have a clear expression of ideas you know what you are doing you know what you are doing you know where you are going you know what you want to achieve Uh, in critical thinking there's acceptance of personal responsibility for own thinking but in without critical thinking you question authority tradition reluctance to question received what does critical thinking mean critical thinking means that you analyze if you are if you have an issue if somebody say okay there's an issue uh this person say this this person say, okay let's let, let's let's look at solomon for example solomon in the bible uh a woman came two women came they were fighting over a, a, a son that oh this one killed my son this one this this one that that is the wisdom of solomon is critical thinking because what solomon did was okay the one that is alive bring the bring this bring the boy bring the boy let us divide it into two now what solomon was thinking at that particular time is that okay you said you are the owner of this son that you are not the owner of the one that is dead okay let's see if you are truly the owner of the son you will not want us to kill your son if you are not the son that is alive you don't want us to kill him but the other woman was saying kill him kill him let's divide it let's divide him into two but the, the, the woman that really owns the child you know a woman would not allow his son to be dead 
in his presence in our presence the other woman said no let's just leave this let's just leave the boy alive let the woman carry it's better to, to for the boy to be alive i would not still have a son even though i'm not the one taking care of him let the boy just be alive so that is the critical thing so what Solomon did was I saw definitely the woman that wants her son to be alive is the real owner of the of the son that is alive. Why the one that is dead belongs to the other woman? That is a sample of critical thinking. Think it logically. So how do we do this? You analyze things. You inference. You explain. Evaluate. Self-regulation. Interpretation. So all these things, all these skills are necessary for crit critical thinking. Now let's go to literacy skills. Students are informed globally, they are global citizens, because they have access to uh, internet and effectively, it effectively use cultural authentic resources in ethical and legal ways. So internet has made students to be an informed global citizen. So, so they have a lot of information on their, in their disposal. They listen to news, they listen to, they, they have access to Facebook, to Twitter and every other, uh, every other outlet. So because of this, we need to carry them along in all these things. We can't just say because uh, they are still students, so they should not. No, you, everything you are going to do, we are, you have to, you have to, they, they, they know the, the, the latest, the best footballer. They know, they discuss it among themselves. So as a school, you don't have to say, no, we are not interested in them. We are just interested in their, in their knowledge, in their, in their academic knowledge. No, you need to carry all these things in, 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 uh, along. Now, in information literacy, can the students identify the information need? Can the students find the information needed? Can the students evaluate the information retrieved? Can the students synthesize to create a new information produced? Can the students use information ethically and legally? So this, these are the questions you, you need to answer to know that if you are doing this right when it comes to information literacy. That is, if your students has access to an information, can they, can they, firstly, can they identify information? They must be able to evaluate the information. They must be able to know this is a fake news. That they can do that through the knowledge of their, through, through the use of their critical thinking. Students should be able to analyze the news. When they see a false news, they should, able, should, they should be able to know that this is a false news. This news is not real. That is part of information literacy that you need to teach your students in this 21st century. How can they use information ethically and legally? Can the students decide to create new information? From the information that they, they read, can they create another information from that? So those are the, those are the things you need to teach your students. Now let's go to media. When we talk about media, we talk about social media, the traditional media, and every other internet media that you can think of. Most of your students now, even as young as 10, they have, they have a, a Facebook account. Yes. So if you, as a teacher, you are saying you are not, you are, don't want to be on the internet, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that, how will you be able to teach them, or how will you be able to be in vogue to talk about media? When they are talking about media, your students are even, they know better than you. So you must be able to teach these skills, the media, you must be able to know what is going on in the media, the latest news, what is going on as a teacher. So let's move on to technology. So let's talk about technology now. They have access to websites, they can use social media. Now with the advent of ChatGPT, <laughs> they can access video, podcasts, feeds, evaluating web resources, researching on the internet, emailing, chatting, texting, microblogging, using social sites, visiting virtual worlds with virtual reality, using wikis, blogging, message boards, a lot of things are going on. A lot of things are going on. So we thought this thing, don't say that because those, those students are small and they are young, you, and you don't need to tell them about this. We don't, they are already doing it. You, see, you, have to, you have to come to their level. This is their level. This is, the, this is the 21st century. You need to come to their level. Are you with me? You need to come to their level. Eh? They interact with others. They have WhatsApp. And you, some teachers, are, 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 don't, they don't even have, they don't even have WhatsApp. They don't even have many things that they are supposed to have. They don't even know anything. They don't even, up to now, some teachers don't even know what they call ChatGPT. Some teachers don't even know what they call AI. Imagine, where their students are already using it. May God help us. Now, let's look at uh, this. Academic achievement, 24th century learning, and academic uh, how academic uh, 21st century 21st century learning can help academic achievement. Now, digital age literacy. If you look at digital age literacy, that's why I think the boy is a change 
break down stuff. So when we talk about the digital age literacy, we are talking about basic scientific, economic, and technological literacy. From there, we talk about the visual and information literacy, more cultural literacy and global awareness. So that is the digital age literacy. Now, we talk about the inventive thinking. We talk about the critical thinking, adaptability, managing complexity, self-direction, curiosity, creativity, and risk-taking. I order thinking and sound reasoning. So from there, we move to effect communication. It has to do with teaming, collaboration, interpersonal skills, personal, social, and civic responsibility, interactive communications. Now, now talk about uh, eye productivity. These are the skills that need to be learned. Uh, prioritizing, planning, and managing for results, effective use of real world tools, ability to produce relevant, high quality products. Ability to produce high quality products. So these skills need to be learned in the 21st century. So we talk about these skills, innovation, communicate, information, integration, implement, ethics, monitor, question, participate, multitask, all these key things. So creativity has to do with uh, ways of thinking, creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, and metacognition are required for deep thinking and powerful learning. Ways of working, communication and collaboration skills are essential to working in the world today. Tools for working, information and technology literacy are the tools for working today. Living in the world, time to rethink how students should learn instead of how teachers should teach. Hmm. In the 21st century uh, teaching, it is not how the teacher to teach, but this is student focus, not teacher focus. You have to rethink how the students should learn instead of how teachers should teach. Now, let's see the transformation that happened from 20, 20th century to 21st century. In the, in the 20th century, it is based on curriculum, but in the 20th century, it is project based. Uh, in the 20th century, it is time slotted, but why in the 20, 21st century, it is on demand? Now, in, in the 20th century, one size fits all, but now in the 21st century, it's personalized, customized teaching. In the 20th century, it's competitive. Everybody wants to be this. Everybody wants to be the best there. But now, it is collaborative. You allow them to work together. Now, in the 20th century, it is confined to the classroom. Why in the 21st century, it is a global community? In the 20th century, it is text-based. You only have to read from the books, write. But now, in the 21st century, they, are, they have access to the internet web-based. In, in, in the 20th century, they have, the, the, the evaluation is based on summative test. Why now, in the 21st century, is on formal evaluation? Now, in the 20th century, they are learning for pass, learning for school, learning for grade. But in the 21st century, they are learning for their life, to change their life, not just learning for grading. Now, let's look at how to launch a 21st century classroom. 21st century classroom is totally different from uh, a 20th century classroom. Let's look at this quote from Albert Einstein. Education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind. So before we go to the next, uh, our next slide, please kindly share this broadcast with your, with your colleagues. Try to share this broadcast and please, as much as possible, try to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please click, click on the subscribe button as you are watching this video. Just click on the subscribe button. Click on the subscribe button. Please subscribe and like this video. Please like this video. If I enjoyed this video, please like this video. So another quote from Albert Einstein says, Computer are incredi incredibly fast, accurate and stupid. Humans are incredibly inaccurate and brilliant. Together they are powerful beyond imagination. That is when a human and a computer eh, when human and computer work together, they can achieve a great result. Well, what are the characteristics of 21st century classroom? Curriculum must become more relevant. Teachers are facilitators. Develop higher order thinking skills. Interdisciplinary nature. 
we have perfect teaching strategies. These are the characteristics of a 21st century classroom. Now, let's look at the difference between 20th century education and 21st century education in, in terms of classroom. Now, in the 20th century classroom, classroom presentation and material are typically developed in advance outside of classroom, outside of, outside of class, with, with, with teachers as primary developers. But in the 21st century education, classroom presentation and material are developed dynamically both inside and outside of class with students as co-developers or as primary developers. Now, classroom in the 20th century, classroom activity often focus on the teacher as presenter and students as the audience. <laughs> this is a thing. Now, in the 21st century, classroom activity focus on students as a participant, an agent, and the teachers as guide or mentor. You may be wondering how you, you, will, you can achieve this kind of thing. It's just like achieve two flip classroom. I think we'll learn about flip classroom later. Classroom activities emphasize exposition in 20th century. But in the 21st century education, classroom activity emphasizes discovery and application. In the 20th century, classroom is the primary site of access to course content. That if they don't come to class, they cannot they cannot learn anything. But now in the 21st century, there is access to course content by electronic sources and media. Internet is there, social media is there. In the 20th century, students and teachers have access to one another, primarily in the classroom. But now there's online training, there's online teaching, or there's online classroom. There is Zoom. There's Google Meet. In the 20th century, discrete disciplinary boundaries are preserved. But now, in the 21st century, we have interdisciplinary connections are encouraged. Now, in this 21st century teaching, it is student centered, not teacher centered. Teachers are facilitators of learning. There is learning by doing, collaborate with others. Web 2.0 application. Now there is no Web 3.0. There is now Web 3.0. Why well, there is Web 3.0? Many people don't even know what they call Web 2.0. Chocolate of Web 3.0. So, as teacher, we need to be uh, updated. Now, one of the things that makes uh, 21st century classroom different is that because there is what we call interactive demonstration board. And I know many, many schools, like 95% of schools, doesn't have that. You are going to watch a video very soon. What this interactive demonstration board all look like? As 21st century classroom must have this interactive demonstration board, must have access to internet, must have pen that record audio and data, must have desktop and mobile devices and web-based applications. 21st century classroom must be must think tech friendly. Must be tech friendly. Flip the classroom. Flipping of classroom is is actually making course content. Or lesson content available to students before the class begins. Think virtual, make it easy and back it up. Now, if you are a, a teacher, if you need to develop your 21st century skills before you can develop your student, as a teacher, you must develop your thinking and problem solving skills. You must develop your information and communication skills. You must learn academic content through real world examples. You must know how to use these technology and communication tools. And lastly, your interpersonal and self directional skills is are uh, important. Now let's look at practical approach to a 21st century education. A 21st century school must have school management system. You can't be doing the way you are doing pen and paper to record the exam, to do this, to do that. No, you have to have half a school portal. Digital brand and awareness should have a website. Those are, the, those are the few things that I need to tell you about 21st century skills. Maybe I see many other things. Now, let's talk about 21st century classroom. The classroom must be innovative, equipped with technology, must have collaboration and communication tools, and teachers must be facilitators, not just uh, not just, uh, just teaching and teaching. You just be, must be a facilitator. Now, Let's talk about 21st century teachers. If I'm going to be a 21st century teacher, you must have a learner-centered classroom and personalized instruction. You must allow your students to become producers. And as a teacher, you must learn new technologies, go global, join different teachers groups online. In America, in UK, there are a lot of groups that you can learn new things. On Facebook, teachers group, a lot of teachers group. 
you go global be smart and use smartphone then make sure you go digital now let's look at example of a 21st century classroom one must be equipped with technology eg projector interactive whiteboard laptop or smartphone so you can see this class you can see this classroom even if you cannot afford your school cannot afford presently to get all these things and then you can start from somewhere so must be equipped with projector interactive whiteboard laptops or smartphone two your your school must have the skills that they need like critical thinking and creative session involving stem eg coding programming designing now step let's talk about stem a little stem is a curriculum based on the idea of educating students in four specific discipline which is science technology engineering and mathematics in an interdisciplinary and applied approach rather than teach these four disciplines as a separate and discrete subject stem integrates them into a coercive learning paradigm based on real world application are you with me so many of us know about stem education now but we are not doing anything about it when we talk about stem we talk about coding programming designing 3d several other things now in fc by Dutech, we have a branch let's let me quickly uh talk about that we have a branch called young nigeria engineering academy in this branch what we do is that we offer in school after school and campus based technology training program where we train students in private and public school on exciting 21st century stem technology and coding courses during their regular academic session or after school as as the case may be we offer a wide range of courses for both primary and secondary school as follows mobile apps games design and coding so we also do graphic and website design video and animation robotic so this skills helps the students to learn critical thinking collaboration creative thinking and several other things, innovation so the 21st century skills as we are teaching them all the, uh, the, the stem education we are also teaching them all these skills now why technology and coding technology is evolving every day and companies in every career fields are constantly searching for employees that have technology skills so it is high time you start preparing your students for that we create this experience for students through a wide range range of uh, engaging programs like video game design web design 3d card modeling and game based coding and more what are the importance of stem education the part of the education include racing fisher engineers expand to uh, stem education or coding expand the student horizon the students explore cut edging application and programming and computer science which are uh, help to increase their curiosity and imagination it also improves the problem skills problem solving skills of the students because when you are doing coding you are, when you are coding you, you your your problem solving skills will be improved it increases motivation and it increases uh social skills now let's move on now let's look at a case a case study of the of, of a young boy a young teenage boy that uh coding has successfully changed his life his name is joshua Aguala, the youngest programmer and ceo in nigeria he started coding at the age of six or seven years and he's one of the youngest youngest ceo eh? he's, he has a company called Josh for tech the young boy started coding at the age of six because his father saw the potential in him and started training him he has spoken at ictel expo of the lagos chamber of commerce and industry in july 2019 he has built a number of games healthcare half and a few websites so look at this now imagine in your school now you have the likes of joshua Gbola who can build things you know what it will bring to your school you know the motivation the parents will see and say wow so my son my daughter can do this you you know the advantage the doors going to open for your school in this coming session so we can train your teachers on how to establish this kind of training this kind of coding in, in your school so we we we, we have experts that that, do, that that are going to teach your students we can teach them online we can come to your school to come and teach coding or if you don't have teachers to present for training you can be coming maybe once in a week to come and have a coding session with your students and you that we, we even make your school to stand up so make sure that you have this at the back of your mind in this new session that is coming that you must start coding in your school so for inquiries on that you can 
drop a message to us on WhatsApp on 090 777 8156. Again, 090-777-8156. So let's move on. So we are moving on. We are moving on. We are almost getting to the end of today's training. So let's look at this 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 sitting arrangement, collaborative system arrangement in the 24th century. Look at this. Look at this. Look at it. Look at it. Because we want the student to collaborate. So look at how the arrangement is done. Just study the arrangement. You can see this one that is changing. You can see different arrangements in the classroom. Different arrangements based on the project they are doing. So that they can brainstorm together. They can work on projects together. They can solve mathematics uh, uh, exercise together. They can do things together. So in 21st century, you don't allow your student to be individualistic. So let's move on. This is another, this another one. This is another one. You can see. You can see this another. This is another one. This another one. So you can learn from this and start making things happen. Now, now in 21st century classroom, believe it or not, lighting is an important part of 21st century classroom design. Bright fluorescent lightning is being replaced with more natural and incandescent light through the use of windows and lamps. So the classroom must not be dark at all. This makes the students more comfortable and reduces headaches. But studies have shown that students' learning rates have improved between 7 and 26 percent in classrooms that are exposed to adequate natural lighting. Flexible lighting options are also beneficial as students use technology more frequently since dim light makes screen easier to see. In the 21st century classroom, there should be outlets, electrical outlets, so that you can plug your devices, your projector, your laptops, and every other things that you will be needing. Now, another thing that you need to work on as a digital, I mean, as a 21st century school is that you must do your brand awareness. Many people don't even have a Facebook page. Eh? You don't even have a Facebook page, talk a lot of websites. I wonder how there will be a school in this 21st century and they don't even have a website. No website, talk less of having a school portal. So you don't have a website, you don't have a school portal, you don't do digital marketing, and you are in this 21st century. Ah, I don't know, I don't know how you are, you are surviving. I don't know how you are surviving. Because without all these things, without you having all this, all this brand awareness, digital marketing, you, you, how do you attract prospective students? Hmm? You can only do that by executing the community digital marketing strategy specifically made for educational institution so we can help you it's part of our service we can help you build a school management system school portal your digital marketing your flyer video marketing everything that you can take off in education edu educational uh, uh what you call educational marketing school marketing we can uh, we offer all these services just a, a message we can we'll be able to give you a code now let's talk about school management system which is Many people know as school portal. School portal is an information management system for education institution to manage all their student data. It provides ability as registration of students in classes, documentation of grades, analytical marks of each student, and other evaluation elements. Advantage includes improvement of communication. You can easily communicate with parents, with teachers, and you know, it increases student enrollment ratio due to the hectic schedule of organization and top decision making policies. It becomes troublesome to check in with the enrollment ratio of the student. So, with school management system, it reduces the body. It reduces your work. It automates your work. You can easily generate results online. You can do a lot of things with school management system. Now, talk about the school website. It is also important for a 21st century school. So, if you are, if you are not even having a website at this age, you are just changing yourself. Website is one of the most effective tools a school has to improve communication and get parents market its strength and build a solid you know trusting reputation within its community now if you are a teacher in this 21st century you must be very adaptive you should be able to adapt to whatever things come your way you must be able to know how to use smart board 
because smart board are replacing chalkboard and tablets are replacing textbooks and the 21st century teacher needs to be okay with that you must be a lifelong learner you don't just sit down and expect students to be a lifelong learner but you as well you must stay up to date with current educational trend and technology and know how to tweak old lesson plans from years before to make them more current technology is changing at a rapid pace and that means that as a 21st century teacher you must be able to ride along the latest technology whether it's for lesson or grading will allow the teacher and students to be able to learn better and faster and effective teachers knows that learning about the latest gadgets can truly transform their student education so they are not just current on the new trend but really know how to master them as a, as a 21st century teacher you must know how to collaborate you must know how to work well within a team over the past decade the potter skill has grown quite rapidly in school learning is deemed to be more effective when you can share your ideas and learn with others sharing your expertise and experience and communicating and learning from others is an important part of learning and teaching process 21st century teachers are forward thinking an effective 21st century educator think about their students future and is aware of their career opportunities that may arise from them they are always planning to ensure that no child gets left behind so they are focused on preparing today's student for what could come in the future so we are going to watch a video now to see how real well the 21st century classroom or school works and what you should be start preparing your school for so let's we are going to watch the video now just hold on i'm going to watch the video now Twenty-first century learning is not changing what is being taught in the classroom, more so the way in which teaching and learning takes place. The room is there is not anything as suspected. It is better. Some of the kids are excited about being on our flat panels where they can have interactive lessons that are being taught to them. Um, we have one fantastic item that we call the Hover Cam, which in 21st century learning, we've done away with the teacher desk. And so the Hoover Cam is a teacher workstation that has everything that a teacher needs to be successful while still allowing her to be a mobile aspect of the room to move around and help assist kids in their learning. If I go to a school like this and it makes me feel so excited, I would like, like, wish that I could stay to this at, a, at that school. My favorite That's thing nice. here was the 3D computers. So the reason why I like those 3D computers is that there's our activity on it where you can like touch it, like there's a pen and you touch it and touch something else in the computer. It gives you this feeling like you're actually holding it. The really great thing about the Z-Space is that once they're finished, forming and developing objects on that system, they're able to transfer it over to the 3D printer and actually print 3D objects. Our students, they live in a digitally activated society and they spend the majority of their personal time on devices, using digital and social media as a means of engagement. And so in order for us as educators to meet them where they are in their learning process, it's important for us to embrace 21st century learning and help move the needle in their educational foundations. This place is awesome! Wow, 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 wow. Tell me a student that will go to short school and will not be happy. Just tell me a student that will go to a school that is equipped like this and will not, will not want to be going to it costs a lot of money. But you can start from somewhere. You can start from somewhere. So, uh, that is the end of our video. Uh, that is the end of our training today. That is the end. That is the end. So thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much for your patience. If you are able to watch this video to the end, ah, you've really tried. You've really tried. So, um, and we are going to give you something special for waiting to the end of this video. We are going to give you something special because I believe that many people uh, that watch this video, they are very interested 
in getting started as a 21st century school in the next session. So we are going to do uh, something which is training some selected number of schools on how to implement 21st century uh, education in their school. No matter the size of your school, no matter your budget, how you can start 21st century uh, skills integration in your school. So we are we are offering you a personalized uh, specialized training on how to start this 21st century in your school. Before I even offer you this training, we are going to ask you some questions based on your school population, what you currently have, and what you can you can do. No matter how small your school, either primary or or secondary school, how you can start 21st century skills integration in your school. The tools that you can use for free, how you can do things for free, things that are, that will not cost you much money, based on your school size. So, for you to qualify for this offer, what you just need to do is send a message on WhatsApp zero nine zero seven 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 that is triple seven eighty one five six, stating that I have just watched the twenty fourth century uh video the training video and i want a personalized training on how to uh start it in my school so we'll be able to take it further from there so thank you very much for your time god bless you don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed to this video please uh, to this channel please subscribe it's very important your subscription is very important please like this video and share this video if, if after this broadcast this video will still be able, will still be available for viewing so you can still share it with your other school owners with your teachers and several other people please try it as much as possible if this is the only thing you can give in returns just share this video with your uh with your with your colleagues thank you very much that will be the end of our broadcast today. God bless you.